Hi, I'm Linda Vinipiano. Um, a lot of you know me already. I'm Dr. Schur's personal clinical coordinator and I'm the executive clinical coordinator for Share Institutes, um, all of our locations. Um, today, I'm gonna be speaking to you specifically about, um, for those of you who are heading into the, the St. Louis office to do a cycle in St. Louis, I'm gonna kind of gear this all towards that and the staff there, etc. cetera. Um, of course, uh, I want to introduce you first to Mary Kay Montgomery. She's the RN. She's the clinical manager over in our St. Louis office. And here on the St. Louis uh, webpage, you'll be able to find a picture of her and her contact and her email, et cetera. Um, she's, she, she's going she's gonna to be able to do everything I'm doing for you, but we wanted to do something where I can, ahead of time, get a lot of information out to you guys, kind of a what to expect, a what's next um, from the very beginning to the very end, because whether you just had a consult with the doctor and you want to know what's next, you know, what to expect, what do I do now, I got a lot of info, or you're all the way down to it's the day of your embryo transfer and you want to know what, what can I expect, what's next. Um, I'm going to go through all that with you guys. Um, I've learned everything. The, the information I have is mostly because for 15 years, my patients have asked me these questions and my patients have have, have, have told me this is the information they, they've needed. So I've become very good at that because you guys have, have geared me towards what I have to do and what I have to know and what more important, what you guys have to know. So Mary Kay Montgomery, she's the clinical manager in St. Louis. Um, I'm always reachable. I'm mostly in Las Vegas with Dr. Sher, but I travel out to St. Louis and I do cycles with him there. I help out there. I coordinate there. Almost wherever he is, you tend to find me somewhere, somewhere around there. Uh, most important, I'm always accessible by email. Uh, you'll probably find my information on this on this page as well, but certainly I'm going to give it to you now because I want all of you to always feel free, no matter where you, what you're doing, where you're cycling, where you're at, to say, I'm going to shoot Linda an email. Seems like I know Linda. We talk all the time. So I'm going to, I have a question for her and I'm going to be able to help you out with that. My email address is Linda V, V as in Victor, Linda V at shareinstitute.com. So you use that whenever you want to. So, all right, what am I doing today? Basically, um, I want to start, like I said, at the beginning and, and talk about what to expect, um, mostly in going through a cycle, getting into a cycle. Uh, elsewhere on this website, there are um, plenty of videos about how to do injections that I've done. Uh, so certainly when it gets down into the details of what exactly are the medications I'm using and how to do them, when to do them, what needles to use. You're going to be able to find all of that information on this website as well under injection instructions. So you're not going to find that in, in this video today, but mostly this is just a lot of information that all of you at one point or another need to hear and probably need to hear a couple of times too. All right, so let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning where you're, you're usually, you've just, you've had a consult with, with Dr. Dial, Dr. Cher, Dr. Witten. Uh, you've gotten a lot of information. You've gotten a lot of questions answered. You're probably a little overwhelmed with the amount of information you've gotten. Um, good, bad, usually it's good because after talking to these docs, you find that, you know what? There's a, there's a, there's a path out there for me. There's a, there's a, there's a road out there for me. And it sounds like this person, this doctor I've just talked to, he's going to be a great map reader and he's going to get me to where I need to go. And it's going to be a very positive and optimistic feeling. But yet again, what, what, that's great. What do I do now? What do I do next? Do, more than likely you're in the system, so to speak, so that you've already, if, if you haven't already, you're, you're uh, hooked up to speak to one of the, the, the office manager um, who's going to go through, got to go through all that financial side of everything, got to check out insurance, got to get the pre authorized got to do a lot of things like that. And you're going to have probably appointments specifically to go through all that, learn about our different financial plans, what's best for you, et cetera. Uh, so, so that's going to be happening probably soon after you've had your consult with the doctor. Now, the way we do our cycles uh, out in St. Louis is we have our cycles pre with pre-selected dates. So we know pretty much, um, at least going forward for the next six months, I know exactly when I'm going to be having these cycles. These IVF cycles are timed specifically. So this way we make sure we know everybody's available, the doctor's in town. More important, you actually can plan your life around this cycle. I mean, a full IVF cycle is going to take you a couple of weeks to accomplish. Uh, you want to make sure if you've got to travel, you want to make sure you've got your travel arranged, you got to make sure you got your time off work, you've got all that kind of stuff. 
So a lot of the pre-planning of the cycles is, is works for you as well. Now, once you've talked to the doctor and once you've spoken with the financial individual and, and you've gotten to the point that you want to start moving forward a little bit, maybe the doctor's talked a lot about some testing that you need to have done. Um, again, generally, the doctor will make sure he's hooked you up with the right individual in the clinical side of things. Uh, it could be one of our medical assistants, Jamie or Penny, or even maybe Mary Kay herself, to get going on some of that testing. Uh, they will take care of ordering immune testing or getting you the orders necessary so you guys can get started on your testing. Uh, but there's going to be a point where, like I said, you're going to be ready to, to move forward to select your cycle. Now, one of the things you're going to want to keep in mind is that in order to um, have these pre-selected cycle dates, we do need to get you on a birth control pill. So when we talk about answering the question, so when do I want to do this? When do I want to cycle? Maybe the summer's a good time for me. Maybe doing this yesterday is a good time for me. Whatever your clock is, um, keep in mind it takes, I'm going to say, about four to six weeks even maybe comfortably up to eight weeks to get ready for an IVF cycle. Most important is what we got to catch ahead of time and at least a month ahead of time. because so we've got to catch a period because we've got to get going on the birth control pill. This is what kind of keeps us in a nice little holding pattern. And this is what makes uh, those specific cycle dates. Uh, well, we got an April 1st cycle coming up. We've got an April 29th, uh, you know, uh, May, whatever the dates are. They're coming up and you want to pick one of those dates. We make that date work with your body because we use a birth control pill. So that's one thing you're going to want to keep in mind. In other words, you wouldn't want to, to, to call two weeks like, well, I'll use an example. Let's say we're interested in the April 29th cycle. Well, I wouldn't want you to think, geez, I guess I better call by the 20th of April so I can get going in that cycle. No, no, no. You want to keep in mind, again, four to six weeks, even sometimes eight weeks, you want to, you know, contact that office manager to say, you know, sign me up, commit me to that cycle. I want to, I want to get moving. I want to start meeting with the coordinator and start planning this cycle. So that's one thing time frame wise I want you to keep in mind. Um, once you do decide, like I said, you've, you've picked a cycle date, you know you've got that period in time there, maybe you've already started on some of the, the testing that the docs want you to have done. Um, then, like I said, you, you, you let the office manager know, sign me up, she's actually gonna, you know, right, actually fill you in, put you in on that, on that cycle date. Most important is you've gotta have your first coordination appointment. Uh, now that'll be with one of the clinical coordinators there in St. Louis. Uh, this is called a chart review appointment and it's just a big hodgepodge of learning a whole lot of things about this cycle. Now some of you will come in and already have had previous IVFs, maybe even IVFs within this clinic, elsewhere, what have you. Um, every IVF cycle is different. And sometimes the more experience you have at doing IVF, the more questions you have. So I never assume just because somebody's had an IVF before that, oh, they're an old hand and they're not going to need much. Sometimes those are my patients who need even more because they've gotten a lot smarter about all this and they have a lot more questions and they want a lot more information. But this will be this first appointment, this chart review appointment is primarily what I'm going to go over next with you in the next video. Now, kind of keeping it rough for a minute, there's going to be two groups of people that I'm going to have. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of split this into two videos geared towards each group because they're, they're different groups. The first group is what I'm going to call the stimulation group. This is my group of IVF patients who are going to be on fertility drugs, stimulation drugs, because they are, you know, going to be egg donors, because they are going to stimulate to do a staggered IVF, because they're going to do a conventional IVF. But either way, we're stimulating their ovaries with fertility drugs. So I'm going to do a, a kind of a chart review with you in just a moment geared towards that. Now, my other group of people are my recipient people. That would be people, surrogates, that would be people who are doing frozen embryo transfers, that would be people who are using egg donors. Those people are not stimulating, they're not taking fertility drugs, however, they are on a medication calendar. Um, they're in a very important cycle, and, but it's just a little bit geared a little bit differently. Um, so I'm going to have a separate video that's going to be geared towards the recipient individuals. Uh, so um, join me next at the next video and uh, pick your Pick your group and we'll talk next about how to prepare for your cycle. Welcome back. This video is geared towards my recipients doing a chart review for the recipient type cycles. Uh, now I've made a, a separate video geared towards the stimulation cycles. 
And if I know most of my patients, and I do, you went ahead and listened to that anyway because you guys just eat up information. So you might find that you're going to hear a lot of the same things um, that I'm going over, uh, and that's perfectly fine. More information, the better. Now, the kind of uh, patients that I'm going to be gearing this talk with is is those who are doing what I call, again, a recipient cycle. That could be a frozen embryo transfer. You're the recipient of embryos. It could be a donor recipient cycle where you're using uh, doing a fresh cycle and you're doing a, uh, a fresh transfer using an egg donor. Uh, it could be you're going to be a surrogate in a cycle. The, the calendars all look the same. It's all the same. Uh, the point of the cycle is different and has a different type, but the calendars are always the same because you're simply a woman who is going to be receiving embryos. Now, um, you'll see a shot right now you'll be looking at that is uh, this actual recipient calendar that I'm going to be talking about. Now, again, your calendar may look a little bit different. Your coordinator will be available for you if you if there's anything that you notice that's different. But again, this is this calendar you're looking at is a good general sense of what a recipient calendar is about. Now, basically, just to keep it big picture for a minute, in a recipient calendar, I am doing really again just two things. And what I'm doing is one, I am turning off your hormones temporarily for the cycle. Again, if you listen to my other video, uh, I talked about this. I've, in order to control the cycle, I've got to turn off your pituitary hormones. I can't have you ovulating. I can't have you growing a follicle. I can't have you busy doing your own cycle when I'm trying to do a cycle. So you've always got to be on injectable Lupron, and you're on it for a total of about three weeks. But that's one of the points of a recipient counter is you're on this injection to keep your hormones quiet. Now, your hormone of choice in a recipient calendar is simple. It's estrogen, injectable estrogen. Uh, doctors prefer not to use a patch or oral forms of estrogen, but rather you'll find that we use the injectable form of estradiol valerate, sometimes called del estrogen. Now again, there are injection instruction videos um, on this website. You'll find all the details about how to do these medications there as well. But on this calendar, you'll see, and now this estrogen, we are trying to do in a recipient cycle what nature does for you. Uh, you grow a follicle each month. Now remember, I should stop myself. Remember, in a recipient cycle, I've got one focus, the uterus. I don't care about the ovaries anymore. I've got my follicles, or I should say rather, I've got my embryos. I'm not counting follicles. I don't care what's going on in the ovaries. The focus of this cycle is the uterus. And the uterus responds to the hormone estrogen. Now, normally when you're growing a follicle each month, as you know, that follicle's getting bigger and bigger, and as it's getting bigger and bigger, it's producing estrogen, and your estrogen level's getting up higher and higher, and it gets to just the right point, oh, maybe in a natural cycle, 200, 250, something along these lines, and that's a nice estrogen level for your uterus. It's what it's made its nice lining for uh, in response to that estrogen, and, and well, that's what we're trying to do here. You'll find in your recipient calendar that you're going to be on twice a week estrogen injections. Now, the doses tend to start going up a little bit, and we start to uh, monitor your estradiol levels because we want to see what the levels are. And again, just like in nature, I'm trying to slowly raise that up. We kind of shoot for raising it above 500. I want a little extra cushion in there. But that's what a recipient calendar is all about. One, giving you Lupron to make sure your hormones are quiet. And second, giving you estrogen to make a nice lining. Now, just like in stimulation calendars with people who are transferring, there are a couple of medications that you're going to see in here. You might be on a steroid. Generally, you're on either dexamethasone or prednisone. And likewise, you're going to be on intralipids if you've got immune issues because, again, this is a transfer calendar. Now, intralipids is about a three-hour IV infusion for those of you who have either natural killer cells or uh, maybe you've been told you have matching DQ alphas or for whatever reason the doctor is prescribing this intralipid infusion. As long as you're not allergic to soy or eggs, it's a completely benign, boring IV infusion. Um, like I said, it takes about three hours to infuse. Um, it's, it's inexpensive and, in, and it basically is given to you to help protect those embryos against your body. Now you may have the elevated natural killer cells and, and you all know how I generally call that my Rottweiler immune system. 
you've got that immune system that's a little bit more aggressive, uh, probably keeping you pretty healthy, but unfortunately attacking some things that's not always supposed to be attacking that are foreign to your body like embryos. And this intralipid infusion basically helps prevent, protect those embryos against that kind of immune system. Um, again, you're on some kind of a low dose steroid pill like a dexamethasone or a prednisone as well. Now, if you're a recipient using an egg donor, um, you're gonna come into cycle. Generally, your donor is starting on the start of cycle. Again, if you pick the April 29th cycle to, to make your cycle, your donor will be starting her monitoring on the 29th. You will only have two appointments for the cycle. You will have your first appointment, which tends to follow the donors on the next day, for example, April 30th. You'll come in and this will be, again, one of two appointments. You'll get your lining checked. You've been on your estrogen now for about three weeks. We want to see how you're doing, see how that lining measures. And you come in and the doctor will do a simple ultrasound to measure your lining. It's going to look good. And now we're going to wait. We're going to wait for the donor. Donor is going to continue her monitoring probably by Thursday, Friday, Saturday. She's going to be ready for her egg retrieval. Um, the egg retrieval day will be the date of your partner uh, coming in to give his sample, or perhaps you've got a frozen backup or a donor sperm, and obviously that we'll just use that on egg retrieval day. And uh, we're going to now get the eggs from the egg donor. We're going to do ICSI, that's the sperm injection on all the mature eggs that we got from the donor. Now, I should tell you, as we're seeing the donor, every day I'm bringing that donor in for ultrasounds, I'm always letting you know how things are going. I'm updating you on how the follicles are looking, how many follicles we have. On egg retrieval day, I'm letting you know how many eggs we got. We're then gonna learn afterwards how many uh, of those eggs fertilized from the ICSI, and we're going to continue to grow those embryos into that blastocyst stage, which that'll take us out about five to six days after the egg retrieval. So now we're into that second week, probably around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of that second week. We're looking for you to come back for your second appointment, and that's the embryo transfer. Of course, we'll have a, a very, usually it's a great conversation about how many embryos we have, and now the biggest concern we have in life is getting too pregnant, don't want to put too many back in. Um, most of my recipients using donors will tend to be older, and this isn't a scenario that they've been faced with before, so it's very, it's very good news to hear. You've got so many good embryos, we need to talk about not getting too pregnant. And we'll talk about how many embryos to transfer. You'll have your embryo transfer with a doctor, always under ultrasound guidance. Um, you will usually tend to tell you to have that fullish bladder. Um, ultimately, do not stress about the full bladder. Um, doctor can always put a little water in, take a little water out, just to make sure that bladder is just right for the embryo transfer. Uh, we need a fullish bladder because it helps position that uterus so that it kind of lays flat for me so the catheter can have a straight shot in. But even more important, that fullish bladder helps prevent the uterus from contracting and that's important during a transfer. Uh, we'll transfer one or two embryos, whatever you've discussed with the doctor, you'll kind of be a couch potato after that overnight at home or in the hotel, and uh, basically can start resuming normal activities after that, and uh, probably gonna have a bunch of frozen embryos for you as well. Um, that's it, you've only got two appointments in the clinic when you're using an egg donor. Now, being uh, in a frozen transfer cycle, is the same basic thing. What you just heard me describe, with the exception of there is no waiting around. You still, as a recipient, follow this same type of calendar. You're on your Lupron and your dexamethasone and your, if you need it, you're getting intralipids. But most important, you're on your twice a week estrogen injections. And this is what's creating a nice lining for us. Now, in a frozen transfer, again, you're part of that pre-planned cycle. Uh, you actually have a little bit more freedom in this cycle. Usually your coordinator will let you select from a choice of about five days to do your embryo transfer, to make it a little bit easier for you. Uh, in your transfer cycle, when you're doing a frozen transfer, you're only going to uh, have two appointments as well. The first one is going to be a lining check, and exactly five days later is your second appointment, and that's going to be your embryo transfer. They will thaw those blastocysts on the day of your transfer. Uh, I'm going to say 90 plus percent of embryos survive the thaw. Of course, you can't guarantee you know that all embryos survive the thaw, but 90 plus percent will survive the thaw for a transfer. Um, because we flash freeze our embryos, our, our frozen embryo transfer success rate is very high. Um, sometimes our embryologists will even tell me it's as high as our fresh cycles. 
that might be due to the fact that oftentimes your body is a little bit more calmer in a frozen transfer cycle. Uh, you don't have all those hormones around growing all those follicles, having ovaries going crazy. Um, it's a little bit more, less chaotic, I should say, of a cycle. Uh, but for whatever the reason, our frozen transfer cycles are extremely successful. So basically in a frozen, that's what your calendar of treatment is going to look like. Uh, again, you're only gonna be with us for two appointments. Oftentimes I get questions about, well, do I have to do that? Maybe you don't live here in town. Maybe you travel and you'll want to know, do I have to come in for that first appointment, that lining check appointment? And my first answer is we'd prefer it because that lining check appointment is critical. Uh, we, we can't always trust the measurement out there in the real world. And sometimes when you try to stay home and have a local doctor do your lining check appointment, we find that they don't measure it accurately. Uh, maybe your lining was just fine, but they measured it as being too thin. And now at the last minute, I have to fly you in to check your lining. And we were trying to avoid a flight altogether. So now we, I've made you fly in at the last minute. I've made you worry. And this is why we'd rather just do the lighting appointment here. So I'd rather have both appointments here. Now, the preparation for any kind of recipient cycle is often the same as it is for other cycles. Um, if you're using a donor, you're, you're getting your infectious disease testing done. We're checking out, you've got to get a uterine assessment done. Uh, sonohistogram, saline ultrasound, hysteroscopy. Something that looks at the uterine cavity to make sure it's free of any polyps or fibroids or scar tissue or anything that would prevent embryos from implanting. Your coordinator will go over that with you in a little bit more detail. Um, if you're over 40 or over 45, which we're happy to get you pregnant, we want to make sure you're going to be healthy and pregnant though. So you might find your coordinators can add on some extra blood work just to make sure we got liver systems, kidney systems, all those things, maybe even uh, EKGs and things like this. Again, we're happy to get women pregnant, you know, anywhere in their 40s or older. We just want to make sure you're going to be healthy and pregnant too. So that's why we ask this extra testing sometimes. Um, in a frozen cycle, you tend to have uh, already done a lot of the work to get ready for a cycle. Um, so sometimes that's already done. And again, your coordinator will always go through with you. And if you've got old records from other clinics or other IVFs, especially if you've had testing done in the last 18 months, remember, we'll use that as our testing. So sometimes that can save on you getting testing done. Uh, medications in a recipient calendar are markedly less expensive. You might only be looking at up to $500 of medications versus three to 5,000 in a stimulation cycle. So it's, it's a much more pleasant financial cycle as well when it comes to medications. Your coordinator will take care of ordering all the medications you need, usually using the mail order fertility pharmacies to order that. Um, now you may have, again, you may have be doing a staggered cycle where you're coming back for a frozen embryo transfer and you're transferring embryos that have been genetically tested. Again, the doctor or the coordinator will go through the specifics with you of, you know, exactly what I have and what that means. And I'm actually going to make a little separate video talking a little bit more about genetic testing if you want to learn a little bit more about that. Uh, but I think that's about it for the recipient side of things. Please feel free. Remember anything that I've gone over here that doesn't seem quite right with what you might be doing. This is just to supplement what you're going through. Please make sure you speak with your coordinator about it. You're always welcome to contact me, Linda V at SharonStute.com. If you have any questions about anything, I'd be happy to help you. Thanks.